TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Following 40 days of relative quiet, Palestinian Islamists have once again launched a rocket from the Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities indiscriminately. Senior U.S. administration officials urged Jerusalem's political leadership to take a cautious approach vis-à-vis -vis asserting sovereignty over parts of the West Bank. German Chancellor Angela Merkel declares Berlin's unwavering support for the security of the Jewish state. Palestinian Islamists launched a rocket from the Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities last night, the first such incident in over 40 days. Thankfully, the indiscriminate rocket fire did not result in injuries or damage, since the incoming projectile exploded in an uninhabited area within the Eshkol Regional Council, which is situated in Israel's western Negev region. In a retaliatory response, the IDF spokesperson's unit informed TV7 that an aircraft targeted Hamas infrastructure, which, according to the Israeli military intelligence, was used for underground activity in the southern Gaza Strip. In addition to the aerial strike, IDF tanks targeted Hamas military posts along the Israeli security barrier line with the Islamist-controlled enclave. Meanwhile, regional tensions continue to run high over Jerusalem's aspired bid to assert its sovereignty over international disputed territories that are situated along the west bank of the Jordan River, including the Jordan Valley and the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria. According to Palestinian media reports, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu had telephoned Jordanian King Abdullah as part of efforts by the Israeli leader to discuss prospects of asserting Israeli law over parts of the West Bank in accordance with the U.S. administration's peace initiative. According to Jordanian officials who were quoted in the report, however, the Hashemite monarch refused to accept the Israeli premier's call and further instructed his staff to postpone a scheduled meeting that was reportedly expected to take place in Amman with Israel's alternate premier and defense minister, Benny Gantz. While the Jordanian embassy in Israel did not comment on TV7's request for clarification, the Israeli Prime Minister's Bureau in Jerusalem quickly denied the report. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu held a meeting with representatives of the Bitronistim Forum, an organization that represents over a thousand IDF reserve officers of various ranks that seek to promote an alternative voice of conservative fortitude. Speaking on behalf of the delegation, Major General in Reserve Gelshon Yitzchak, who formerly served as the commanding officer of the IDF Home Front Command, praised the Israeli Premier for the way he has led the State of Israel over the past 10 years. General Gilshon further asserted that an apparent paradigm shift in all that pertains to Washington's support for Jerusalem's bid to assert its sovereignty over parts of the West Bank is the most important and dramatic decision that has faced the Zionist movement of this generation. יש כאן שינוי פרדיגמטי מחויב המציאות. ההחלטה הזאת על מה יקרה בין הירדן לבין הים היא אחת ההחלטות החשובות, הדרמטיות ביותר של התנועה הציונית בדור הנוכחי. And while unity among Israel's political leadership was legally required to bring about any decision vis-à-vis -vis asserting sovereignty, General Gilshon voiced a veiled accusation toward Netanyahu's political partners, alternate Premier and Defense Minister Benny Gantz and Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi, both of whom formerly served as chiefs of the IDF's general staff, of disturbing the prospects of so-called annexation. <laughs> In response to the voiced confidence of the Bitronistim Forum, Premier Netanyahu emphasized his continued efforts to realize the Israeli measure. 
זו ההזדמנות שעומדת לפנינו, וזה מה שאנחנו אה, עמלים עליה כרגע, ואני מודה לכם על התמיכה הגדולה. שמח לשמוע שיש אלף קצינים ועוד אלפים שרוצים להצטרף. תבורכו. אה, Subsequently, Netanyahu and the Bitchonis team held a meeting behind closed doors during which Netanyahu informed the generals of Jerusalem's challenges and concerns. Nevertheless, the Israeli leader highlighted his keen efforts to assert the sovereignty of the Jewish state over the territories in question. It is important to report that a second meeting within two days was held by Netanyahu, Gantz and Ashkenazi, as well as Parliament Speaker Yeriv Levin, in the presence of U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman. While the discussions that took place behind closed doors remained in the dark, a source informed TV7 that the main obstacle to the matter of asserting sovereignty over the West Bank remains a domestic issue. While Netanyahu continues to promote the annexation of a little over 30% of the West Bank immediately, in accordance with the Trump peace plan, senior U.S. administration officials call for a more cautious approach. The most prominent of the American officials is senior White House advisor Jared Kushner, who is regarded as the architect of the Trump plan. Kushner informed Netanyahu of his objection to wide-scale annexation, urging the Israeli leader to make do with partial annexation, which is subject to the consent of his coalition partners, including alternate Premier and Defense Minister Benny Gantz and Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi. Meanwhile, in an interview with the American Jewish Committee, which is holding its annual global forum by virtual tools, Gantz highlighted his intention of accepting the Trump peace plan in its entirety as a basis to move forward while underscoring the importance of advancing in a reasonable and coordinated manner. First, I think it's a very important uh, vision and in a way plan. I had the opportunity and the privilege of expressing it to the president himself and I've been in contact, close contact with his people all along. Uh, it gives us a realistic approach of how a stable future should look like. Uh, and I intend to promote it as much as I can in a most responsible way. It's a baseline to continue from. Uh, and all in all, I think it's a great plan and uh, we have to work on the basis of it and we have to move forward with regional partners, with local partners and of course uh, with consensus within the Israeli society and with full coordination and acceptance of the backup we need from the United States. Among other world leaders and diplomats who addressed the AJC's global forum, German Chancellor Angela Merkel in a film statement voiced Berlin's unwavering support for the security of the Jewish state while highlighting her opinion that the only way for peace to be established in the Middle East is through direct negotiations for a two-state solution. Zu unserer Verantwortung zählt auch, für die Sicherheit Israels einzutreten. Diese ist nicht verhandelbar. Und auch dies möchte ich anmerken. Dauerhafter Frieden in Nahost lässt sich nur durch Verständigung zwischen den Völkern und eine verhandelte Zwei-Staaten-Lösung erreichen. Davon bin und bleibe ich überzeugt. The German Chancellor also stressed her country's responsibility to protect the Jewish people by taking resolute action against anti-Semitism in all its forms. Wir wissen um unsere Verantwortung der vielen Millionen jüdischer Kinder, Frauen und Männer zu gedenken, die während der Shoah von Deutschen entrechtet, verfolgt und ermordet wurden. Und wir wissen um unsere Verantwortung gegen Antisemitismus in all seinen Ausprägungen entschlossen vorzugehen. Das verstehe ich als Teil unserer Staatsräson. Turning now back to Jerusalem, where Israeli Premier Bimi Netanyahu welcomed his Greek counterpart, Kriakos Mitsotakis, who made his first international trip outside of the Hellenic Republic. Very good to see you, and it's a reflection of our successful battle against Corona and our wonderful relations. In, indeed, indeed. Always a pleasure to come to Israel. My first uh, uh, trip yep. abroad. Uh, post-corona, post-corona phase one at least. Says a lot, yeah. says a lot. The Greek and Israeli leaders held an extensive meeting at the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem, after which they attended the fourth G2G meeting between the governments of Greece and Israel. In a joint statement of the two Prime Ministers, it has been revealed that Athens and Jerusalem are discussing a target date of August 1st for opening the Israeli skies for travel to the destinations of Greece and Cyprus. 
The statement noted, however, that the decision depends on what happens with the corona pandemic, but if the numbers allow it, this is the target date for opening the skies. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's Global Prayer Initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray for the salvation and peace of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, alongside our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion worldwide. I would also like to seize this opportunity to thank all of you that support our productions here in Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan, have an Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.